Hello, hello. Welcome to this week's career strategy session. I'm super excited to continue the Wednesday sessions where I share with you negotiation tips. So over the past couple of weeks, I've received quite a few emails along the lines of, I want to ask my boss for a raise, but we have a really good relationship and I don't want them to think badly of me for asking. Well, first things first, I want you to take that thought, ball it up, and throw it away. All right? We're going to dig into that in just a few minutes. But let me introduce myself to those of you who don't know me. My name is Jacqueline Swilly. I am a career advisor. I work with millennial women, and I help them to negotiate when they get job offers at performance review times and small business deals. So mostly my clients are those career women who also have a five to nine, AKA the side hustle. I am the best-selling author of Navigating the Career Jungle, which is a guide for young professionals. And I travel around the country speaking at conferences and conducting trainings to help women really own their value and negotiate for what they're worth. In 2016, women only get paid 79 cents on a dollar compared to a white non-Hispanic male. When we really dig into those numbers, it's horrifying, really, because black women make around 64 cents on a dollar, Latino women 54 cents, and Asian women 90 cents on a dollar. Now, for equal work, there should be equal pay, right? It's just fair. So that's why I'm on a mission to help eliminate the gender wage gap. I am very enthusiastic that the more awareness we bring, the more women are going to gain the skills that they need, whether it's professional skills or just negotiation skills, so that they're earning more supporting their families. So let's dig into it today. I gave you a preview of the topic that we're going to talk about based on questions that I have been receiving. If you have a negotiation question, hit me up on Twitter at JB Twilly or just send me an email using my website, JacquelineTwilly.com. So what I want you to know, I said, take that thought of, I have a good relationship with my boss. I don't want to ruin it. So I'm not going to ask for a raise or a promotion. I said, ball that up throw it out the window, okay? You gotta get rid of that type of thinking. Now, there is a way to ask so that you don't ruffle feathers and so that you are being taken professionally and seriously. What I'm going to do is, I've been really preparing for this topic quite extensively and I've looked through some of my notes from clients that I've worked with and just some things that I've heard throughout the industry of things to avoid. So we're going to start with the things to avoid. In that I'm going to mix in some things you should do. Then we're going to talk about the things that you should definitely do. Then we'll recap, okay? Every Wednesday at noon I'm here so feel free to hop on and watch live do through YouTube Live or through Google Hangout. So what to avoid. What you don't want to do is send an email that says, hey, I want my raise. Or, where's my money because I know that there is an increase in the budget, so I should be getting my cut of that. The other thing that you don't want to do is to say, I have student loan bills or my rent is increasing and uh, I need more money to pay the rent. You can't say things like that. You have to tie it into what's in it for the business. What is the best business case? Okay, because that's what people respond to. So those are things to avoid. Now, if you're sending an email, you don't just want to send that email out like, hey, I want to talk to you about more money. If you're going to be having a face-to-face -face conversation, establish rapport for first. You might be nervous and you might want to just get it into it and get it over with, but you don't want to just rush into it and start saying, hey, I'm coming to you today because I need some more money or I want to talk about a raise. So you have to back into that. So the way that you back into it is you say something like, hey, you know, I would like to schedule a meeting to talk about my performance and my goals moving forward in the company. That's one of the ways where you shift that conversation. The other thing that you do along those lines is if you're going to have a face to face meeting, start the conversation off building rapport. And what I mean by building rapport is ex exchanging pleasantries like, hi, how are you today? How are things going for you? In addition to that, you definitely 
want to engage in small talk. A lot of people think small talk is useless, there's no place for it, but there's definitely a place for small talk. So don't think that you just need to brush over and hit a high level going wham, bam, boom. So what I'd like you to do is think of your normal conversations that you would have with your supervisor and start practicing those types of conversations when you go in to negotiate. I do want to remind you all that I have my phone here. Um, if you'd like to ask a question during the live session today, if you're watching Wednesday around 1230-ish, Eastern Standard Time, you can tweet a question to me. I have a couple of questions coming in and I will answer those shortly. So again, go in, establish rapport. If you're having a face-to-face -face meeting, you just want to say, hey, my name is, well, they know your name already. You want to go in and you say, hey, supervisor, how's your day going? Give them a chance to respond. Now, in negotiations, you want to listen more than you speak. So if you ask a question, don't cut that person off. Let them finish their thought completely. So if you say, how's your day going? Listen to them. Then when it's your time, say, hey, I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you today. And I have some things I want to share with you and I want to get your feedback on it. So you make this a participatory conversation where you're both on the same side and you want to be on the same team versus being combative like you're on a different team and I'm on a different team. I'm trying to get something from you and making it like a win-lose situation. You don't want it to be a win-lose conversation at all. Now, if you're sending an email to set up the meeting, what I'd like you to do, this is especially true if you work remote and you don't see your supervisor, but maybe a couple of times a year, you want to tee the, the email up and say, hey, can we have a phone call to discuss? I really want you to have the phone call because so much can get misconstrued going back and forth through email, okay? the Your perception of what you said might be different from how they receive it if it's written. So th because there's no tone inflection, like when you're talking face-to-face, -face, you have eye contact, but when you're over email, you don't have that. But if you're sending an email, just tee the conversation up and try to get it to either a Skype or Google Hangout type of meeting or even a phone call. Now, in your initial email, what you want to put is, hey, I, I'd like to talk to you about my performance and the value that I'm adding to the organization in these specific ways. So think of like the top two or three things where you are hitting it out of the park. Okay, this is really, really important. You have to be crushing it in your job if you're going to ask for a raise. If you're doing just enough to get by, then you got to step it up because no one is going to pay you for doing just enough. They're not going to give you extra if you're just doing enough to get by. So think of the ways that you're hitting it out of the park. In that email, say, hey, I, I like to talk about my performance and the value that I'm adding to the organization in X, Y, Z ways. That's where you plug in those two or three things where you're going above and beyond. All right. Now, in addition to that, what I like you to do is say, when would be a good time for us to talk about this? I'd love to do it over Skype, or if you're going to be in town soon, let's talk it face-to-face -face when you're in town. Again, I want to remind you that this is for people who work remote or you're using email to set up that meeting. Now, if you're face-to-face -face in the office with your employer, you want to have that meeting face-to-face. -face. And again, you can send an agenda ahead. One of the things that I like to do is make sure you review everything that you've done over the past year. This is going to be the number of projects that you've worked on. If you haven't been keeping an active record of this, this is something that you want to put in your toolbox, okay? This is something that you want to make sure that you start tracking. So pull up an Excel spreadsheet, list the name of the project, the milestones that you contributed to, the outcomes, and the kudos, as well as lessons learned. And in that, you want to take it, you don't want to send the raw data over, make an infographic, make a PowerPoint where you're condensing this information and you're giving a high level summary and send that over and say, these are some of the things that I'd like to discuss. Once you present your value in terms of how you're adding to the organization, then your supervisor is more likely to say, okay, this is something I can consider. So for those people who are afraid of ruffling feathers, you're not really ruffle, ruffling feathers when you go in and you're presenting a business case saying, this is the value that I'm adding to the organization. Now let's talk about how you just talk through your accomplishments in this meeting. You want to start off with the company's goals and objectives. Most companies 
are pushing their objectives. You should know what your company's major initiatives are. And if you don't, that's a whole nother conversation and how, I mean, it's just so hard to function if you don't know what you're working towards. So tie in your aspirations and your work performance into the overall company goals. So right now, a lot of people have 2020, a lot of my clients, their organizations have big 2020 goals. Um, yeah, 2020 is catchy. So that's why. So check to see if your company has some type of 2020 goal or any major initiatives that are three to five years out. And then what I want you to do is think about how is what how is your daily activity? How is the work that you're hired to do contributing to helping them reach those long term goals, whether it's three year goals, five year goals, 2020 goals. And then what are you doing to go above and beyond? OK, so when you have that conversation, you start off by saying, I know our organization is really focused on increasing this and this by the year of this and this. And as part of my daily work, I've been doing give specific examples. So you tee it up like that. Now, you're not gonna give a full out presentation like a lecture, this is gonna be a conversation. So plan out what you want to say by writing it down. Write down what you wanna say, have your spreadsheet of the things that you've done, and then translate that into either an infographic format or a PowerPoint format, and let me just stop here. Sometimes it takes my clients three to four weeks to gather everything that they've done over the past year because they're not actively tracking it. So don't think that this is something that you can do in 20 minutes. You want to be really thoughtful and considerate about what you're doing. Be deliberate and intentional about the information that you share, share with your supervisor. Because what most people don't realize is your super supervisor may like you and they may think that you're awesome, but they don't know everything that you do every single day. Why? Because they have their own responsibilities of things that they're doing as well. So what you need to do is take a step back and in that, think, how can I remind them of the things that I'm doing and bring this to the forefront of their mind? So write your script out of everything that you're going to discuss. And then think about, okay, this is where they might interject or they might say this. What might they say? And write that down and highlight it. And then I want you to come back and make sure that you can write down an answer to their possible question or comment. And then also a segue to go back into your pre-planned script of the things that you want to talk about. So it takes a lot of time to plan a negotiation. And you can't skip the preparation step. If you watched any of my past videos or listened to the podcast, Navigating the Career Jungle, you understand that it takes a lot of prep work. And again, you can't skip the prep work because those people who are best prepared, they get more of what they want. So you want to do this for the entire conversation. That's why I said pick two or three things, areas where you're hitting it out of the park and use those. Now, once you go through the things that you've been doing to help the company reach their goals, then you get to the point where you say, you know, based on the value that I'm adding to the organization and this in this area, I'm wondering, is there a possibility for me to move into a role with XYZ title? This is if you want a promoted title or promotion change, uh, title change or promotion. You'll say, I'm wondering if there's a possibility for this. Does it make sense for me to have this title based on the level of work that I'm doing and the value that I'm adding to the organization? Once you ask that question, pause. Don't keep rambling on. Don't say, well, the reason why is because, and the reason this is because, no, just stop. Pause right there. Don't say, I'm sorry to ask and have like this body language where you're shrugging yourself in. Don't do that either. That's not effective. So be confident. Make sure you maintain eye contact. Make sure your body language speaks of confidence. Once you throw the question out there, pause. If you're a talker like me, you might need to count in your head and just say 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, normally three to four seconds. It seems like a really long time and they're gonna jump in and they're gonna fill that awkward gap and they're gonna say something. So once they say that, again, in your script, you should plan, well, what if they say no? Well, if they say no, 
don't like start throwing papers around the office like that's it i'm out of here i'm quitting you got to give me this or else no ultimatums ultimatums are not effective you know your career is something that you're going to be working in for a really long time your reputation matters people talk even outside of the company that you may work for so don't throw a tantrum okay we're adults we're not children if you don't get what you want what you want to do is say okay well, what will it take for me to do in order to get this title change or to get this promotion? Once you ask a question, again, just pause, all right? Take that moment, pause, and let them answer. If they say, well, I need to talk to such and such about it, say, okay, would you like me to repackage this PowerPoint or this infographic for you to present it to your supervisor. That's typically what they need to do because a lot of times when they're going to their supervisor, they have to fight for you and they have to build the case. So it's going to be completely appropriate if they say that they need to speak with somebody else. But you just want to make sure that you're going to give them the information that they need. Now, this is super important. Very, very important. Listen to me here. Don't do this like right at the day of your performance review. You want to do this months before. A lot of times the money that's going to be allocated for the upcoming year raises and promotions, things like that, that's going to happen when they're planning the budget. So find out when your company's fiscal year ends. It's not always corresponding to the calendar year. Find out when your company's fiscal year ends and when they start planning the budget for the upcoming fiscal year. And you want to try to time your conversation about your performance and the value that you're adding to the organization then versus waiting until that moment where all of the decisions have been made. The money has been allocated for the year. All right. So um, lastly, what I want to talk to you about, and then I'm going to answer some of your questions, is if they say yes. If they say yes right out of the gate and say, yes, we're going to give you this, what do you say? You take a second and you pause. You know, personally, I would be like, yay, but you have to Play it cool, be professional. Say, you know what, thank you. I appreciate you recognizing the value that I'm going to continue to deliver to the organization. We emphasize that you're excited. We emphasize that you're going to work hard. And also um, ask them, what is the next step? Do we need to have this in writing? Yes, you need it in writing. So I'm just saying, you, you want to make sure that you cross all of your T's, dot all of your I's here and say, what's the next step in the process? Do you reach out to human resources? Can I expect a letter explaining that I'm having a title change or promotion? Now, a lot of people say, oh, I don't, they told me yes, so I'm going to leave it at that. You will not believe the amount of times where your manager or your supervisor they get an offer that they cannot refuse. They get promoted. They leave the company. There's no written document that you're getting a promotion, a title change, a raise. And then you're stuck with nothing because there's no documentation of it. So make sure that once they agree, you express your excitement, not jumping over the moon. You know, keep it, keep it cool, but reemphasize that you're going to continue to deliver value. Ask them what's the next step. When can you receive this in writing? Okay, don't skip that step. Do not skip that step. Make sure it's in black and white, okay? All right, so lastly, what I want to share with you is it takes practice, okay? If you go into it with a positive attitude, don't go in it being combative. Don't go in it thinking, I'm go I want to win, so they need to lose. It's going to be a win-win. You're adding value to the organization. They are going to continue to get an employee who is delivering at the highest level. And that's how you're really going to elevate yourself as a leader and move to the next level. When you're having this conversation, do not say, I'm sorry to ask. Do not go in with an attitude of, this is an ultimatum. This is a conversation about the value that you're adding to the organization. And because of the value that you're adding to the organization, you would like to be compensated for that value. Okay. When you have that conversation like that, it's just going to flow a little bit smoother. Help writing what you want to say out in advance, making sure that you plug in points where you think your supervisor may have a question or a comment, and then writing your response to that, as well as how you're going to loop back and get back to the point where you're going to answer that question and get back on task, on track to finish your other points. That's going to be super important. The more you do this, the better you will get. So 
keep practicing. Now the question that we have here is from Wendy and Wendy says, what if my supervisor every time we have a meeting is distracted, how do I keep their attention? All right, Wendy, great question. How do you keep their attention if they're always distracted? I'm assuming you mean that they're checking email, they're getting phone calls, people are knocking on the door. If it's possible, if you have this type of relationship with your supervisor, have the meeting outside of their office, maybe in a conference room, maybe go to lunch or coffee and have this conversation. If you don't have that type of relationship where you can have that conversation outside of their desk area where they're not having door knocks on the door and they're distracted, just come out up front and say, hey, you know, I know you're busy and you normally are being pulled many different ways because of your responsibilities within the organization. But I really appreciate if I can get 10 to 15 minutes of your undivided, undivided attention right now. Is that possible? Go ahead and get that first yes, okay? That's that's like a little negotiation uh, strategy, get that first yes. Is it, is it okay for me to get 10 minutes of your undivided 15 minutes of your undivided attention to talk about this because it's really important to me. Most of the time, they'll just say, yeah, they'll agree to it. All right, I have one more question here. It says, what if I've asked my boss for a raise before and they said no, how do I approach this again? Well, great question. What you wanna do in that situation, if you've approached your boss for a raise before, they said no, how do you bring it up again? call it out and say, hey, I know we talked about this before, it wasn't possible, but I wanna make sure that I'm putting myself in a position where I can advance and grow within the organization. So can we talk about what it's going to take for me to be eligible for a promotion or a raise? What do you need to see me deliver? How much value do I need to add above what I've been doing in order to, to take it to the next level and be considered as a leader within the organization? Because Anytime you want more money, anytime you want a title change, that means more responsibility, which means you are a leader. So frame it as a, that leadership portion now. Hey, I'm approaching this from a standpoint of how can I add this value based on, how can I add value to the organization in order for me to be compensated and move up and be more of a leader? So that's a great question. Now also be honest with yourself. If you didn't get a promotion or raise before, you know, are you coming in maybe two or three minutes late? Are you taking a little bit longer lunch break? Are you on Facebook, on your cell phone, or on your computer at work? Because people notice those little things, and sometimes it's those little things that you may not do often, but you do here and there that other people see and they talk about, and that can be a stumbling block for you. So just be really honest with yourself. Be mindful of your behavior at work uh, so that you're not perceived as someone who is slacking, even if it's something that you've done as a one-off or you've done here and there. Make sure that you're always going above and beyond, giving 120%, which is emulating excellence. That doesn't mean that you're perfect. That just means that you're always giving your best. So thank you all for taking time out of your lunch break to share with me. I want to remind you to know your value you and negotiate what you're worth. If you have any questions, go to JacquelineTwilly.com, send me an email or a tweet, and I'll see you right back here next Wednesday. Bye.